So this problem asks us to conduct a hypothesis test and provide the test statistic, the critical value, and then to state a final conclusion. So test statistic, critical value, and state the conclusion. Um, and so let's dig into this. Company claims that its package of 100 candies are distributed with a certain um, percentage of red, orange, yellow, brown, blue, and green candies. So use the given sample data to test the claim that the color distribution is as claimed. This claim is what's expected, right? We expect a certain distribution, but then we also have another set of numbers over here. If you click that icon, what is going to bring up is what was observed, the actual counts. So um, we're going to have two different lists. One list will be just simply what was observed, and then the other list will be simply what was expected. So when we look at out of the 100 candy elements, what's expected, given those percentages, well, since we have 100, we would have 12% of 100 that would be red. We'd have 21% of the 100 that would be orange. And then that kind of continues orange, yellow, brown, blue, and green. So what is expected given those percentages? What's expected will be um, for red, we're expecting 12 out of the 100 orange. We're expecting um, 21 because 21% times the total count, 21% times 100. And similarly for yellow, 14. So we're just multiplying the percentages by the total count. Blue, 25, and green would be 14. What was observed is what we're going to find from the table. So when you click on that icon, what you're going to get is um, another list of numbers. And so for those, what was observed, we found was 11, 27, 8, 10, and 17. So from those two lists, that's enough for us to do our hypothesis test. On one hand, there are these proportions that are stated, proportion one, proportion two, three, four, uh, five and six. And the claim is that those are the proportions, the point one, two, the point two, one, and so forth. And the alternative of all of those proportions being as claimed is at least one of those, at least one of those is different. At least one of the above proportions is different than what was claimed. So what we're going to do is just simply generate our test statistic using technology in this case. We're not going to go ahead and subtract 11 minus 12 squared and then divide it by 12, 27 minus 21 squared divided by 21. We could sum all of those up and come up with our test statistic manually. Um, or in this case, we're going to use technology to do the math for us. And then once we get that test statistic here, right, this is from the, our sample and our data, we're going to compare that to the critical value. So we have another chi-squared critical value and that critical value corresponds to a certain probability of an event happening 
And so that confidence, that significance level is 0 0.10. So what we want to see is if our test statistic falls on into the critical region, the rejection region, or if our test statistic is over here where we don't reject the null hypothesis. So we'll go ahead and drop those two lists into our calculator to have it do the math for us. Um, I think on my observed values, I'm missing a number, 11, 27, 8, 10. That should be 20. So let me rewrite this. So it'll be 11, 27, 8, 10. And then it's 27. And then it's 17. So I'll put those into the calculator. So plugging these values observed and expected as list 1 and list 2. So we have that entered into our calculator. Let's go ahead and run the test. So we're going to go to stats, move over to tests, and drop down to chi-square, goodness of fit. We have list one, list two, and then degrees of freedom will be the number of categories, red, orange, yellow, brown, blue, green, minus one. So that's going to be six minus one or five. And we're going to calculate, and we come up with the test statistic of 14.17 and we also get a p-value of 0 0.01. So right away, given that the p-value is um, 1% um, and our critical value and our significance level are, has they've been stated, our p-value is low enough, right? It's 1% versus the 10%. So um, we can make a decision based on, on that right there. Our p-value is improbable enough for us to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that at least one of the above proportions is different. So there's that. But let's just do it based on the, um, the test the, the critical value. So we have um, a test statistic of 14.17 and we want to compare that 14.17 to our critical value. Well our critical value is going to come from our test. Remember our alpha level and our alpha level is 0 0.10 and our degrees of freedom is 5 and so where those, where those two intersect is the 9.236. 9.236, so that's our critical value, 9.236. So let's put that in here. And our test statistic, as we said, is over here. So our test statistic of 14.17 moves us into the rejection region. So that too, just like the p-value, provides evidence, strong enough evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. It means that our differences are large enough between observed and expected proportions for us to, um, to reject the null hypothesis. So the result seems to support the claim that at least one of the proportions um, is significantly different right, from um, what would have been expected. So the results don't necessarily tell you which one um, is necessarily the one that contributes. Um, or, or is the one that, that is out of proportion, but it, it says at least one. And, you know, the red is probably not out of order. Um, the, the yellow is almost half what was observed, was almost half as many as what might have been expected, eight versus 14. Um, but that's how you would do the goodness of fit test for that one.